Hey you! What up? Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I'm Mariam. In today's video, I am testing new makeup in every single possible category. From primer, to concealer, to powder, to eyeshadow, to brows. Yes, I actually have brow products to test out. So I'm really eager to slap all this on, create this look that you see here, which is pretty dramatic. More dramatic than I usually do, but there's a time and a place for dramatics too. Let's get into this video. Remember to subscribe, notification bell, Wednesdays and Sundays videos. Comment below your thoughts. I want to hear from you. I want to know what stands out to you out of all of these products that I tried. And now let's get into it. Testing new makeup, January 2023. First week, here we come. For primer today, I have a new primer from Lawless and it's called Set the Stage Hydrating and Soothing Primer Serum. This is made in the USA. I don't have the ingredients list in front of me, but this is what I'm gonna use today. I also have a bunch of new stuff from Airborean, one of my favorite brands. If you've been following me for a long time, if you've been subscribed to this channel for longer than two years, you probably already know that I'm a huge fan of the Airborean CC Cream. It is my number one favorite CC Cream of all. They recently released all these other products such as the CC Water and also the Skin Hero. I'm not sure what these are supposed to do. I also have the BB cream. Oh, I really want to test them out. So I'm thinking I might do the Lawless on one face and then say the Skin Hero on the other face just to see what this is and what it does. But essentially it sounds like a primer. The silicone free non-tinted skin perfecter enhances your bare skin upon application and visibly improves the quality and texture of your skin day after day. It combines the efficacy of Korean white ginseng complex with retexturizing enzymes for a visible new skin effect. <laughs> is it me or is this leaving a slight white cast on my skin? I feel like I'm seeing that in the monitor, but that doesn't matter. I mean, I am gonna apply foundation over. This feels a little bit sticky, more like a cream rather than a primer, but I definitely see a perfecting blur across my skin surface, specifically in the pores and in the dark spots area. I do see that it's doing something. All right, let's try the Lawless on the other side. Okay, so this one looks more like a serum. It's definitely more of an invisible type of primer. Ooh, smells amazing. Feels like skincare on the skin. Definitely much more liquidy. Probably something that needs to be set. And also, given the fact that I already have my skincare on, I'm not sure how I feel about applying a serum primer over my moisturizer that I already used to seal in my actual serum that I use for the day, you know? So maybe this can be used instead of your serum or instead of your moisturizer. But anyway, the effect of these two is definitely different. I'm just gonna let this sit. I'm gonna let it rest and set on my face. Next, we have this very cute little PR trunk from Essence Cosmetics. We love Essence around here. And in this trunk, we have a bunch of new concealers and foundations. From the looks of it though, I'm afraid that these foundations may be more like my summertime shade rather than my current shade. But this is supposed to be a long lasting foundation, transfer and waterproof. No parabens, no silicones, no microplastic particles. It's vegan, silky lightweight texture with a smooth matte finish, medium to high coverage for up to 16 hours. Aloe vera, waterproof, shake well before use. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reach for the lightest shade I have, which is shade 150 Natural Tan. I feel like the other two just may be a little bit too tan for me right now. I mean, even this looks a little saturated. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm gonna apply a little bit straight to my face. This is not the ideal method of application for foundation. It's always better to apply some on the back of your hand and dot the product around and then smooth it out. But I must remind you, I am very, very lazy when it comes to foundation. This is just the way that I do it. This is the way that I've been doing it for years. Woo! That is absolutely not my shade, but this is the shade that we are working with. So I am gonna have to work with it. Holy crap. This is really, really, really orange and just definitely not anywhere near what I wear around this time of the year. Also, I just feel like the undertone isn't correct. Even if this was too dark for me, if the undertone was right, I probably would be able to make it work, but this is just too, too orange. You know what also sucks? The primer that I applied underneath 
the lawless set the stage is actually making this foundation pill. Mmm, that is not good. So we are not off to a good start with this trial. Oh boy. And I can clearly tell that it's the lawless primer that's causing this because it is not happening on the Arborean side. Maybe it's the fact that this is a serum type of primer that probably needed a moisturizer to seal it in. But yeah, this side is looking a little rough to say the least. But let's see if I can make it work. Who has their money on me? I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of known for being able to make it work no matter what. I should have probably tested shade camel, which looks darker, but the undertone is a little bit less orange. It's a little bit more neutral. So usually when your foundation starts to pill, there's really no way to get rid of it other than just to take like a paper towel or something a little bit on the rough side and literally wipe it off. So I'm kind of just dragging it down underneath my jaw and I'm hoping to just remove the excess. All right. Mm. I have a feeling that if this were the right shade, I'd probably really like it because the application is pretty, pretty smooth. I am definitely looking very even, even though I'm looking very orange. But the application itself, if this was the right shade, it would probably be good. Moving on. So I got my hands on this new Rare Beauty product and it is supposed to be their eye brightener. This came in a big PR package that I'll show you later. But essentially, I'm thinking this is supposed to be similar to the Fenty under eye brightener or bright fix and this is in the shade light medium comes with a metal tip wand which reminds me of Dominique Cosmetics they definitely did it first I'm gonna use this underneath my eyes to brighten and lift this under eye area I will say that the wand applicator although it feels really nice it doesn't pick up a lot of product the product itself feels very watery it looks like it's separating but I'll show you a close-up of what this looks like obviously I haven't blended out yet but just so you can see what the texture of this product looks like I feel like a lot of people were interested in this specific product. I don't know if you guys can see how watery or like how liquidy it looks, but let's blend it out. I'm gonna use this Lawless Concealer Brush just to see what happens. Mm, I don't know if this is my vibe. It's definitely a very lightweight type of eye brightener. Also feels very serum-like, which is why I keep referring to it as liquidy. But let me actually read a bit more about it so that I can know what exactly I'm looking at. All right, positive light. Under eye brightener, $24. A fresh, radiant look in a flash. Sheer, flexible coverage. No makeup, makeup essential. Wear alone or layer over concealer for an extra brightening effect. Oh, I see. So this is kind of like an additional step for your concealer and they're suggesting to wear over the concealer, not under. All right, I will do that next time. But from my first impression, it definitely feels very light. It definitely feels more like a no makeup makeup type of item. So now I'm gonna move on to actual concealer, which is also from Essence Cosmetics. It's funny, the concealers that they sent me are so light compared to the foundations. Uh, a little bit perplexed on that choice. But anyway, let's just work with what we got. Now I'm gonna try to look for the deepest concealer that I have here, which is probably gonna be this one, like medium. Huh. The undertone here is definitely more of a warmer peachy orangey undertone. I'm gonna try another color. This one is called Warm Shell. This one is a lot more yellow and a lot lighter. So I'm gonna try this here. I'm also obviously trying to balance out this very orange foundation. So bear with me. This concealer also feels a little bit on the watery side. Not to say that it's sheer, but it's definitely not that creamy, thick, tart shape tape type of formula. But not bad. Easily, easily blendable. I'm gonna use my other brush and kind of just press that into the foundation. And then I'm gonna go back to this peachy under eye. And I'm gonna attempt to make this work for me. What do you guys think? Am I getting there? Or are we keeping our fingers crossed for me? I feel this makeup can be salvageable. Just bear with me, have a little faith and have a little patience. All right, next up, we have something pretty interesting from Jaclyn Cosmetics, from Jaclyn Hill. We have the new Complete Your Complexion collection with correcting pressed powders as well as with brightening pressed powders. I feel like this is exactly what I need for my makeup right now. There are six shades in each, the brightening and the pressed powder collections. There's two collections. And if you guys remember, Jaclyn Cosmetics also 
has like a four pan face palette that has brightening and correcting colors within it. So these are supposed to be individuals. I have four shades in each of the collections. So four in the correcting and then four in the brightening. I'm actually gonna insert a clip that I took with my iPhone in natural light. All of this light was off and I filmed it in the back in the backdrop, but my window was open so that you can actually see what it looks like in real life. So I'm gonna insert it right here. All right, so now that we know what the difference between the brightening and the correcting is, I feel like I could use a little bit of brightening specifically in the under eye and in the center of my face. So I'm gonna reach for the Brightening Light Face It All Pressed Powder. I'm just gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury brush. And I'm gonna set the under eye. Now these powders are talc based, those of you who are wondering. So if you don't like talc, these may not be for you. I don't really mind talc. I feel like it's not something that irritates my skin, but man, I gotta say the difference is staggering. This powder is very, very, very smooth and very pigmented. And it definitely did the job of exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to brighten my under eye, to bring a little bit more light to the center of my face, specifically in this like triangle right here. And I feel like it did a really good job. I'm gonna add a little bit of the fair color, which is the lightest that they have. I'm gonna add that like right here, just specifically under the eye, and maybe a little bit in the outer corner. I really like the effect. All right, I'm also gonna add a little bit to in between my brows. I don't know if I'd be able to get away with using this shade if I didn't have this orangey foundation, but right now I'm really just trying to understand how this product is supposed to be used. You know what? It's really working for the purpose that I'm using it for today. Also gonna add a little bit on my chin. Then I'm gonna go back to the light, do the same thing on the other side. Oh, but before I do, I should probably show you a close-up you're interested in seeing that, right? This is my unset under eye and pore zone. And look at this side. It is so, so smooth. I mean, you could still see a little bit of texture, but overall, it is just looking so much better. Check out the under eye, this under eye. Pretty promising. Pretty, pretty, pretty promising. All right, so I'm noticing that all of these concealers, or rather the concealer and the brightener together are creasing under my eye. So I have to make sure I remove the little creases before I powder it down. Also really creasing around my nose. But man, this powder is really, really solid. I feel like solid is a good word to describe it. It almost creates like a solid sort of set on top of your face that looks bulletproof, that looks unbreakable. Definitely more on the glammy side. This is by no means a no makeup makeup type of effect, but there's an audience for that. And there's absolutely occasions for this. All right, so I'm using the fair just in the under eye. I gotta say, I feel like that was a really pleasant experience. So now each of these powders is $32 per compact. So it's not exactly cheap for a powder, but you know what? I'm not complaining because it's really made a difference in my complexion just now. All right, so now if I were to correct, we have like a very, very yellow correcting powder for lighter skin tones. Then we have like a peachy orange one for the mediums, which I definitely do not need. I am very orange at the moment. I don't think I need any more yellow. If anything, I could probably use a little bit of lavender. This is for the tan skin tones. This is very, very, very bright peachy orange. And then the fair one is almost white. So I feel like I have no use for those in today's makeup application. So instead what I'm gonna do is reach for the brightening medium and also maybe the brightening tan. I'm just gonna use these two to set the rest of my face. Gonna use the Sigma Skin Perfector brush and first dip into the medium. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I was kind of able to say my complexion just a little bit using these Jaclyn powders. I don't know if I'm gonna use the brightening tan. I feel like it's not really the color that I would bronze up or contour with. It's still like a little bit too color correcting even though it's brightening. So instead what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to the light, which was like this ivory type of shade. I'm gonna use a fluffy brush and I'm kind of gonna bring some light to the areas that need light. So right here, you see that? It's kind of having a reverse contouring effect. Just like that, and just like that. Maybe just a little bit to the center of the face, the center of the forehead rather. Boom, suddenly she is here and she's here to stay. Moving on. Guys, I have all these new, really beautiful looking powder blushes from Half Magic Beauty. I'm gonna show you a close up of what they look like, but check out the texture. The texture to me almost looks velvety. And now all of these packages here are compostable. So that's really nice. You can actually take out the blushes and you can put them in the magnetic palette that Half Magic came out with a few months ago. I'm trying to actually grab it, it's right here. 
this one. I have just some of their eyeshadows here, but I feel like I can make some room and I can put some of these blushes in here. For now, let me go ahead and actually try these out. This color is so, so stunning. I'm wondering if I can contour with that, but look at this one. Excuse me. Look at this beautiful purple blush. Yes, I'm here for this. But of course, I'm gonna go for a safe color, which is gonna be this one called Don't Be a Doll Cheek Fluff. And also they have a really, really, really cute blush brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this out. Oh, the brush is actually very stiff and the powder itself is very, very velvety. So it's a mousse type of formulation. Interesting, interesting, interesting. No wonder it looked so velvety in the pan. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit on this brush and applying this over all of that powder. I'm just a little bit nervous. So I think I'm gonna start like at the back of my cheekbone and just wait a minute. This is just the most divine application ever it is so so seamless and because this isn't exactly cream and it isn't exactly powder it's very flexible and it's very easy to use even on top of powder oh i am highly impressed right now highly impressed and this brush is actually so so dense i think it's the ideal brush for this type of formula wow should we do a little cold girl nose i feel like we could why not that is so, so cute. First impression, I'm impressed. Just becoming one with the rest of my makeup. Absolutely stunning. Cannot wait to try more shades. I have a feeling that purple shade will actually apply like a dream. <laughs> Should I? Maybe just a little. Oh, so good. It is just so good. You guys, this is TikTok worthy. Now that is cold girl. Gonna add a little bit to the nose. I didn't know I needed this in my life until I just tried it. Very, very, very impressive formula. And great packaging too. Moving on to brows. I never seem to find brow products that I love, which is why I'm so hesitant to try new products. But today I have two new brow products. One of them is actually from Benefit and it's called their Fluff Up Brow Wax. Now I've seen this in action on TikTok and on IG Reels. And basically this is supposed to be a wax to create a boy brow or a laminated brow or a groom brow. This is supposed to be a very flexible type of brow product. So I'm excited to try this one. And then for my other brow, I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix, which just looks like a classic type of brow gel. So I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna apply this one to this brow. Not sure how good this brow gel is gonna be for me because my brows are not easily tamed. They don't grow down flat on my skin. They kind of stick out at the corners and the hairs themselves are pretty coarse and thick. So it's hard for me to glue them down. I always need a ton of product and just a ton of patience, which I gotta admit, not one of my virtues. This is something that I need to work on. I just don't find myself to be a very patient person. And I'm not someone who gets angry easily, but whenever I get impatient, my impatience immediately turns to anger. It's like the only time. I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but anyway, this is the brow gel. Just using this tweezer to um, see if I can glue down the brows. And I'm using the typical technique that I normally do with brow gels. I'm actually holding down the tail end, pressing it down for a few seconds just to see if it sticks. It looks like it's sticking, though I'm not sure for how long. Now for the other side, we've got the wax. It looks like one of those mascara primers. So the color is white. I'm not sure if I need to really load it up onto my brow, but you know, I'm testing new makeup, so I'm just gonna test it however I see fit. All right, I think it's doing a great job of fluffing up my brow, though for me personally, that trend is very much over. I don't really like seeing a fluffy brow any longer. At least I don't like it on me. I also don't like it on other people, if I'm being honest. But given the fact that this is supposed to be flexible, I think we can do multiple things with it. Okay, the brow wax is definitely on the strong side. So what's cool is that I can fluff up the brow, but then if I want to create a very straight edge, I can easily manipulate the hair in that direction. So it's kind of nice, but I am seeing a little bit of that white residue, that flaky type of white residue. So I think you have to work quickly. So for sure, a little bit of a learning curve with this one, but not something that'll take you a long time to learn. I'm gonna use the tweezer again, just to press my brows down, create that straight edge, press it down again. Oh, I think I like this. Bit of a learning curve, but intuitive nonetheless. We're gonna leave the brows as is for now. And let's move on to a few other products. Specifically, I really wanna test out this Pat McGrath Sith Seduction Eyeshadow Palette in collab with, I was about to say Game of Thrones. <laughs> 
This is definitely Star Wars. So this is one of the collab palettes. I also have the Mothership 6 with the Star Wars packaging, and there was a lot of controversy about that particular palette. The, it was a regular uh, Mothership palette with just a sticker on top. So although I have that palette, and although I really like that palette, I just don't want this video to be about that right now. Instead, I wanna try out something that is new from the collection, something that I have not tried before. And so I'm gonna go ahead and actually prime my lid with something different too. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Color Chameleon in Golden Quartz. It's just like this beautiful olive eyeshadow crayon. I'm gonna use this to literally align my lid very heavily like that. And then I'm gonna blend it out with a Laura Mercier brush. This is obviously not an eyeshadow primer, but a shadow crayon. So you could wear this alone. And it's perfect for an easy type of smoky eye. But today I wanna to use it as a base for the Star Wars palette. Oh, I applied way more to this eye. So now I have like a very dramatic smoky base happening here and now I gotta make this one match too. I will say that both the Charlotte Tilbury and the Benefit Brow Wax are not strong enough for my brows. Immediately, I can tell that the edges of my brows have peeled off my skin, so I was not able to use either one of those products to really glue down my brows. I definitely need something a little bit stronger, but perhaps I can use them in combination with something that works for me. All right, so now I'm gonna dip my brushes into the Sith Seduction palette. There's actually two more palettes in this collection, but this is the one that I got from the Pat McGrath event that I went to. I also got the Mothership 6, like I said. So I'm gonna use this light topazy shade. I'm gonna apply that to the center of the lid, kind of blend it out all over. This is very stunning, like exceptionally, exceptionally, exceptionally stunning. Probably did not even need an eye base for this, but I really just wanted an eye base. This is so, so, so sparkly. There's just a little bit of fallout because I picked up too much product. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just press whatever's remaining on my brush onto this eye, which isn't much. I think I basically applied everything to the other eye. And then I'm gonna take my finger. I'm gonna see if there's a difference in application. Definitely a little bit more subtle and a little bit more smooth. So I think I like the finger method better if you're trying to keep it a little bit more wearable, but if you want like maximum payoff, then definitely go in with a brush. Next, I'm gonna grab a tiny little brush. I'm gonna reach for this lightest shade, which looks also very, very complex. There's a lot of sparkles in here, there's pinks, there's blues, there's silvers, there's gold, and it's kind of like in a beigey base. So I'm gonna add that to the inner corner, like that, a bit of a pop, and also right here. Wow, very, very pretty. All right, next, same brush, gonna dip it to the green. I'm gonna add that to the outer portion of my lid crease. I mean, we are going dramatic today. I didn't know I was heading in that direction whatsoever. I thought I was gonna keep it very minimal today, but I guess the face base is what drove the rest of my makeup in this direction. So I'm gonna stick to it. It is what it is. All right, I'm gonna grab the Laura Mercier brush once more and just attempt to make this a pinch smaller <laughs> by blending it in and just rounding it out, rounding out the edges. I don't know if it's looking smaller, maybe it's looking a little bit messier, but maybe that's okay. Next up, we have some new mascaras to test out. I have the Give Beauty by Gwen Stefani, new mascara, lengthening and lifting in the shade Can't Stop Staring, which is basically a black. The package is very, very cool, very Gwen. So I'm gonna curl my lashes. And not that you're actually going to see any of this on camera, because I have so much going on on my lids. Oh boy, very peculiar looking wand. I'm not sure what they were thinking here, but I'm gonna try it. I guess maybe this little ball tip is supposed to help you get into the outer and inner corners. No, I don't really see it as a necessity, but you guys know me, I'm not into gimmicky wands. So this one, I gotta say, it looks like a phallus. They gotta know that. Maybe they did it on purpose. This mascara seems all right at first impression, though I kind of forgot that this is what I was testing out. I was much more interested in the peculiar shape of this wand, but the formula of the mascara, I gotta say, is fine at first. I mean, let's see if it smudges throughout the day, but so far, it feels pretty nice. All right, before I move on to the next stage, I do want to mention that Artist Couture has some lashes, and I'm not sure if I should actually 
add them to my look for another video. F it, I'm gonna add them to this look. Before I cut them, I'm actually gonna show you a close up of what they look like. Alrighty, so we have two styles in these lashes. We have baby doll behavior, which basically looks like baby doll lashes. And we also have the style femme fatale, which looks a little bit more wearable actually, but I think I wanna go for the baby doll because I feel like this is a style that's not so represented in lashes. It's actually hard to find a really nice baby doll lash. So I'm excited for this addition to the Artist Couture line. I'm gonna cut it to my size real quick. The wand on these is very, very thick. So this is a glam type of lash, meaning that it would probably look better with eyeliner, but I actually don't have a new eyeliner to try in this video. So I think I'm gonna skip it. Ooh, ooh honey. I feel like this is a very glamorous baby doll lash. Like it is probably one of the fullest baby doll styles that I've ever tried. I kind of like it. Perhaps not with this super dark eyeshadow because you really can't appreciate all the detail in the lash, but this is definitely something that I'm gonna save and wear again, maybe for my anniversary, which is coming up on the 14th. Oh, I kind of love it. I kind of love it, Artist Couture, Mag Daddy. Ooh, I love it. All right, moving right along to highlighter. For highlighter, we have the new Rare Beauty Highlighters Collection from Selena Gomez, and this is the PR package. And in it, we have some personalized crystal earrings. This is such a nice touch. Thank you so much, Rare Beauty and Selena for this. I love these. MM for Marion Maquillage. Can't wait to wear these. So I feel like this product has been the most talked about in the last couple of weeks or so. I believe it came out back in December, but I didn't want to try new makeup in December. I really wanted to try new makeup now in 2023. So here are the highlighters. The shades are honestly very, very stunning. I love the fact that there's a pinky, there's a champagne gold, there's like a very pale kind of pop highlighter and also like a slightly bronzy one. So I really, really appreciate this. I feel like this just might be a hit it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reach for this shade called Exhilarate. This one looks to me like a classic champagne gold. I'm gonna go ahead and swirl this included brush in this highlighter. I'm sorry. That was really rather beautiful. Beautiful, satisfying type of application. Absolutely blinding glow, but super smooth, non-powdery, almost like a liquid application. Guys, this is nice. And I gotta say, it feels a little bit different from some of the highlighters that I've tried before. All right, I'm gonna do a different shade on my other cheek. I think I wanna go for this pinky one. This one is called Mesmerize. I feel like you don't even need to pick up a lot of product. But oh, man, is this finely milled or what? I mean, this is pretty, pretty nice. Definitely up my alley when it comes to highlighters. I like them to be bright. I like them to be beaming, blinding. I am totally, totally feeling this. All right, I'm gonna go for another shade now, the lightest. I'm gonna do a little bit on the nose and a little bit down the nose bridge, just the tiniest amount, because this one is pretty light. And then I'm gonna take the other color, flaunt. I'm gonna add just a smidge above my brow for a little bit of a glow right here. Maybe even right here. Maybe that's unnecessary, but I really want it to be extra. What do you guys think? I think I'm feeling this. I literally almost forgot that I need to do lips. In the lip category, I've prepared just one lip liner, Hot Gossip from Charlotte T, which is not new, but it's recently been popping up on TikTok more so than the Pillow Talk. So this is why I'm using it today. It's kind of like a neutral brownie nude type of color. And I think this color will go perfectly with the Rare Beauty Lip Souffle in the shade Elevate. All right, you guys, so this is the look for today. I'm just gonna quickly touch up my brows just so they can fit in a little bit better with the rest of my look, which is quite dramatic, but there's nothing wrong with being a little dramatic every now and then, right? All right, so here is my look. And here's what I think of it. First impression, this feels like a lot of makeup on my face. I am literally wearing everything from foundation to super pigmented, heavy type of powder. I'm wearing lashes, I'm wearing blush, highlighter, the works, the works. But I gotta say, I'm not underwhelmed by anything that I've tried today. Granted, I feel like this trial was heading in the wrong direction after I tried the foundation from Essence, which was just a little too orange for me and for my skin tone, but I think I was able to save it specifically with the Jaclyn Cosmetics brightening powders. I think these powders did the thing that they needed to do to save my makeup and to kind of take it to the next level, which obviously made it a little bit more glam and a little bit more full coverage. But I think this is something that I can work with going forward. I actually 
have always liked her powders, even when they came in a palette of four, but I really like having the option of having these brighter shades for specific different uses. Although it's kind of pricey for 32 per powder, I think it's handy and I think it can definitely be used specifically for those occasions if your foundation is a little bit too orange or if it's a little too dark or if it's just not matching you, you can definitely use this type of product to help with that. Everything else that I've tried was also really, really promising. Specifically, I really enjoyed these Half Magic blushes. I thought the formula was just dreamy, really, really beautiful on the skin, really easy upon application. And also it felt kind of different to me. I'm not too crazy about the brow products that I tried. I feel like I still need to play around and like really try different techniques for both the brow gel and the brow wax but so far I'm not really too impressed. I think the eyeshadows in the Star Wars palette by Pat McGrath are really beautiful, very sparkly, high quality, just like all of Pat McGrath's products. This palette is made in Italy. It is a limited edition. And I think this specific one is probably my favorite out of all the three that she has come out with in this collab. I feel like the concealers, both the brightener from Rare Beauty and also the Essence Cosmetics concealers were just a little bit too liquidy for my liking. So not creamy enough, not solid enough for my preference. I far prefer a Tarte Shape Tape type of consistency when it comes to concealers. But the Rare Beauty highlighter, I gotta say, it lived up to the hype. This looks so, so pretty, so glamorous, and just so shockingly stunning. Honestly, I was expecting good things, but I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I do. Do. so easy to use I can't wait to play with it some more so basically that is my roundup for the newest makeup of 2023 so I hope you guys enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching for subscribing I hope you like this look I definitely need to take it out somewhere because you know mama is dolled up for no reason at all anyway I am zooming on out I love you guys check out more of my videos over here I will see you in the next one peace out and I'm out deuces